All right, so mainly because this is AP and I just want to give you the opportunity to dig a little bit deeper into some of these topics, um, I'm going to show you a little bit more advanced organic. Um, I'm not going to get into any mechanisms or arrow pushing or electron tracking or anything like that, but I just want to kind of show you guys some other things um, as we move forward. So let me throw this thing up on the screen. All right, and we're going to look at aromatics real quick. So I'm assuming if you're taking AP chemistry that you might end up in a college chemistry uh, classroom at some point. And so I want you to at least have a working definition of what an aromatic is. Here's a really cool aromatic just to start out with. Um, this is 910-dihydro-9102-benzenoanthracene. All right. Yeah, right. Um, cool molecule. You'll notice that it's got three benzene rings, uh, which we see right here. Right there's a benzene ring. I'll kind of outline it for you. So there's our benzene ring number one. Here is a second benzene ring. Here is a third benzene ring. Um, and then you have this pretty cool structure inside. Uh, which is, you know, a carbon skeleton, right? And you can see that it is three-dimensional in nature, right? And I've now outlined all of the lines, and you can see how complicated organic is. So um, let's look at some of these. So what's an aromatic? Basically, an aromatic is a compound that has delocalized electrons that are, share that are shared in the pi orbitals of a compound. So... Benzene is the simplest aromatic. And you remember last year in first year chem, you, you probably talked about resonance, all right? I know you did if you had me. Um, and you can see that in resonance here, like if we number these carbons, let's just number these three, four, five, and six. And we do the same thing here one, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll notice that the double bonds have moved, all right? Um, one of the problems with drawing a chemical structure is it doesn't take into account the fact that molecules and atoms and electrons are not static entities. They are dynamic in nature. They move. Um, and the thing about benzene is those double bonds can move positions. They can move around, uh, the, um, around the molecule. Down the bottom, there's Buckminster Fullerene, which is C66H. A bunch and um, it is a more complicated much more complicated spherical molecule right it looks a lot like a soccer ball and uh, all of these joints are carbons and they also have delocalized electrons so those um, double bonds can can move now when we talk about the pi electrons right this this right here the pi orbitals remember that um, when you're looking at a compound like, let's say, benzene, um, carbon is in the P block, right? It has P orbitals. And the P orbital is a dumbbell-shaped uh, orbital. Let me see if I can draw this in any way, shape, or form accurately. I have it on the next slide, but I want to at least point it out. So at each one of these joints is a carbon. And in three-dimensional space, above and below the carbon nucleus, is the p orbital right the s orbital is in the middle and so we're talking about these pi electrons these pi orbitals we're talking about this dumbbell shaped orbital above and below the actual plane of the molecule so when you think about pi orbitals i have it drawn much better here right um what they're doing is these electrons are kind of smeared across the molecule that's the best way to kind of think about it in terms of the pi electrons or the pi orbitals. Now, in red right here, we have our sigma bonds. These are our, our single bonds. Um, they're not delocalized. They are static. They're stuck in, in that, that place unless something comes along to break them. So they're you know not really going to move. It's our double bond that is going to maybe form here. And, well, let me use a different color other than red. Why can I not select a color? Thank you. Let's use 
cyan. Why not? All right. So normally, right, we look at our double bonds, and they look like that. So that would be this. So if we call this one, two, three, five, six, then we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then what we're showing here is there's double bond one, there's double bond two, and there's double bond three. Well, because we're saying they're delocalized, that means they can move. So this is really a much better um, kind of representation of those those electrons because they can move kind of all the way around. They can delocalize around those pi orbitals. And we all know that electrons are negative. So if this bond between one and two jumps to two and three, what's well, going to repel those and they're going to move around and you're going to end up with resonance. Right? And if they resonate, if they go back and forth, you'll actually see that we can we often draw benzene like that. We show that it's resonating around. Now, why are they called aromatics? So back when they were discovered, right, you're, you're talking about chemistry that's occurring in the 17, 1800s, 1900s. The one thing that people notice about these, they all have a pretty pungent odor. They all have a smell. Um, and so since they have a distinct smell, they were termed the aromatics. Turns out later on, they all shared this aromaticity in common. And when you hear the word aromaticity in, in organic in the, in the context of organic, we're talking about electrons that can move around the pi orbitals. Now, when you name aromatics, you name them pretty much the same thing, same way as you name an alkene, except it'd be a cyclic um, alkane. So last year we talked a little bit about this. Uh, if you attended, <clears throat> if you attended the springtime lectures, which were optional, uh, then you will notice, then you would have remembered, we say like, if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be hexane, right? If I have one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be cyclohexane, all right? So that's a cyclic alkane. Now, cyclohexane has two hydrogens at every point and is not aromatic. It does not have those double bonds. Each one of these is a hydrogen. Every carbon has four bonds just like hexane does. Okay, but it's enclosed, and so it's hexane, right? We have one, two, three. This would be propane. If it's enclosed, this would be cyclopropane. Uh, this is a highly stressed molecule. It does not like those. Those bond angles are really tight. They, it wants to break, but that is how you would name it. We're still going to apply the same methodology as far as we want our functional groups to have the lowest numbers. We want them to be alphabetical. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. My parent molecule, because it has those double bonds, is actually benzene. At position one, I have an ethyl group. At position two, uh, or sorry, three, I have a methyl group. Okay. Um, this one, it doesn't really matter where I start my numbering as long as my numbering starts on one of the ethyl groups. So I'll start over there just because that's my habit. So I have one, three, five, triethyl uh, benzene. This would be actually, if we want to be really accurate, it would probably one chlorobenzene. Three, four, five, six. So that's how we would name that. But chlorobenzene would probably suffice. Here are some important aromatics. Uh, toluene, really important solvent, not nice for organic living things, but really nice uh, as far as industrial solvents go. Um, naphthalene is the active ingredient in mothballs. Anthracene is used in pigments. Uh, xylene is used in polyester. You've probably seen that on um, maybe a, a tag that has like the ingredients on or the components of some substance, right? Like a shirt or something like that. Um, Benzopyrene was the first carcinogen that was ever discovered. It was discovered in chimney soot. And indole, and the indole ring is actually really important to organic chemistry. It's a great platform to build things on. So is anthracene. 
um, and naphthalene if you're trying to build molecules. Now, what am I talking about building molecules? So let me actually show you, this will be the last slide. Let me show you uh, just a piece of a reaction in organic. So this is the production of something called a yolide. Uh, this is the first step. This is the yolide right there. That's how you say that word. Um, this is the Corey Fuchs reaction. It's one that I studied in grad school. It's a pretty cool reaction. This is just a piece of it. Um, but in organic, the thing that you'll kind of learn how to do is um, do what's called arrow pushing uh, and electron accounting. So we're showing where the electron lone pairs are moving to. Uh, it's the reason that you learn about things like electronegativity and electron affinity, all those trends from first year chem. Um, start to come back in organic. Why would these electrons stay on phosphorus when they can attack bromine? I um, mean, if they attack bromine, they're going to steal bromine. They're going to make this bond, right? So that bond right there um, was formed. Oh, no, nope, sorry. I take that back. That bond right there was formed by this arrow. The arrow shows the creation of a new bond. Um, this arrow is showing the electrons going up and like becoming a lone pair right there on carbon. And then once it reacts, right, this new species can react with the second new species, right, this new bromine. So that's going to make that positive. Yeah, so there's like a tremendous amount of detail that goes into these things. And you can follow the steps through. You make this yolide. And then from a yolide, um, you can... Uh, do the Wittig reaction and create a dibromoalkene, which this would be a dibromoalkene. Okay, so I have uh, two bromines on my, there's my alkene right there. Um, this R is just a functional group, so whatever you want to put on there. And you might use that to make a medicine. You might use that for any number of reasons. It might be the scaffold that you use to get another reaction started, right? So organic chemistry is, this is what it actually looks like. Um, it is the production and the movement of electrons uh, from point A to point B to point C to point, you know, Z1000 in order to make new compounds. If you are more interested in this, um, feel free to reach out. I love to talk about organic chemistry. And, um, but if you are more interested in it and you decide like, hey, I think I'm going to be a doctor someday or something, you'll get to take this class in college and it'll be loads of fun uh, and you'll love it so much. All right. So if you have more questions about organic, we can pursue those. Uh, but for now, that's all I've really got. OK, so keep working. Keep doing your thing and let me know if you have any questions. All right.